Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Sanama Pool, with you at PTV World. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at two important stories. Uh, the first is in reference to what has been going on in India. And of course, this is uh, one of the largest uh, democratic processes uh, with uh, something that has happened over six weeks and seven phases. And of course, uh, the elections uh, have ended now that the results are expected to be announced tomorrow after this huge exercise has been completed. What, of course, uh, is most important is who will win and this is of course a debate that has been going on both within and outside of India and of course as part of our shows as well but now we have the exit polls here which suggest that the BJP led NDA is going to be securing more than 350 seats and so it's pointing towards of course victory for uh, the uh, Modi's term in office once again as was perhaps very initially also predicted with of course some ups and downs throughout this process but of course at the same time we also have uh, the the opposition alliance talking about how these uh, numbers are not accurate and that they are just put forward by the prime minister and in fact uh, what uh, has been uh, constituted or thought over uh, by the opposition alliance points towards their victory and so they're going to be of course uh, taking a look at what their strategy or future course of action is going to be post announcement of results tomorrow if they're not going to be according to what sort of numbers they already had in mind so we're going to be taking a look at what this means uh, for elections in India and how the different parties are going to play out, especially after the results are announced tomorrow. And of course, with the information that we have today, what is likely going to be the future of Indian elections and of course, who is going to be part of uh, the uh, political setup in the country. This is what we're, it is going to be our focus in the first segment of the show today. Our next one um, is also going to be uh, something that we're going to be taking a look at within Pakistan um, with, of course, um, important decisions being made by the judiciary with regards to different uh, political entities in the country but again um something that we've seen the PTI uh, been part of previously as well seems to exist again uh, with the party claiming that they haven't gotten justice um, since uh, the new chief justice of Pakistan came into power and they're saying that previously also there was a problem but now their petitions are also not being heard pointing towards uh, biasness and also asking for um, recusal of the chief justice of Pakistan from cases pertaining to the party of course something that uh, has uh, not uh, been uh, taken uh, well by uh, many lawyers um, and judicial institutions including the Pakistan Bar Council uh, that has uh, talked highly about uh, the competence and the credibility of the Chief Justice of Pakistan and has said that whatever the party has actually claimed is uncalled for and in fact according to the Supreme Court Acts and Procedures Bill 2023 this is something uh, that um, is uh, in law um, and uh, this is also something that uh, is as part of the uh, judiciary uh, the prerogative of the Chief Justice um, and two other judges as part of a bench that can then constitute a bench for um, any particular case. So we're going to be taking a look at what this means, uh, particularly in terms of the political dynamics of the judiciary and the political party, and of course, then the Chief Justice of Pakistan as well, and how um, such um, uh, such blatant remarks are to be dealt with. And so this is going to be our focus at the next segment of the show today. For this and more, as always in the studios, I've been joined by senior analysts Varuk Patafi and Raja Faisal. And for our first segment on uh, elections in India, we've been joined by Mr. Shrinder Singh, who's veteran Indian Army, and Dr. John Dayal, human rights activist. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for being part of the discussion and joining us in the debate today. I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Shalinda, with reference to what we've seen, of course, um, in the past many weeks in India. It's, of course, a very, very big moment, an historic moment. Um, and perhaps for any country, elections are, are huge and impact the future political course of action. But of course, we've seen that from the beginning, reports have been coming in uh, since the elections had not even begun, that uh, there is going to be a third term for the BJP. And now with the exit polls here, uh, we see that this is also now being backed by uh, the numbers that the exit polls um, have shown uh, with regards to the number of seats they point towards that the NDA is going to win. So I want your take particularly in terms of how you view the past six weeks um, in the way that the BJP uh, led a political alliance uh, has moved forward the kind of uh, nuances and issues that it saw within the struggle and whether or not you truly agree with the way that we have seen the exit polls numbers show in light of how uh, the opposition alliance in fact is denying it namaskar thank you sana you have invited us and uh, i really appreciate that uh, that you take our view on this uh, allow me to bring out to your notice and everybody 
a country will get its political setup by the character it has if the indians are absolute democratic savvy they will get a democratic government at the uh, uh, top there is no denying that fact now coming to the point whether it is bjp congress or xyz or anybody it doesn't matter what matters is that the will of the people will prevail as far as the advertisement or your direct question to me that uh, whether the exit poll is right wrong or my take on it let me tell you one thing exit polls are only estimates speculation sure. based on somebody you just cannot you just cannot say that yes they are correct because if they were so correct then why have elections only give it to the you know exit pollers that okay fine carry on allow me allow me to assure you that the people's will will come up those 5 billion 5 million workers who have done the election they have done justice to their own country they have been faithful to their job and they would have done a excellent job that yes it was a unbiased i am a witness to it because when i voted there is no scope for me to see that somebody else can interfere with anything with any system because you see you can influence a particular man i don't mind but there are so many people in that who are the officials nothing can happen as far as your point that it was preconceived or it was before even election said that the bjp will win why not bjp will blow their trumpet so was the congress and indeed doing it that no the government is not supposed to be there we will replace them this is what is called as dance of democracy what else do we want everybody is allowed to say their way yes you might have heard little more coming from bjp they were more successful they were more uh, you know what should ambitious we will go char so far what is char so far char so far is that they are looking at that vision they are not they are wanting the workers to work for it there were people that who were saying very clearly that whether it will be char so far or not and they got entangled in it allow me to say this was one of the best strategies of bjp that they diverted everybody's attention towards working ke ye log kahin 400 par na chale jaye so allow me again there were very very fair and absolute clear cut uh, you know uh, elections done there was no rigging done there were no protest there was nothing happening wrong all cases i will not mind because when you are doing it with 140 crore people there will be there will be some clashes there will be some places where there will be arg jani and all those things but that is to be taken as part of the democracy right absolutely but mr shlinder singh i feel that the um, uh, the congress led uh, opposition alliance seems to of course disagree with uh, the kind of numbers that been seen from the exit polls and i completely understand these are estimates but i also want to build on what you said earlier and uh, i want you to qualify whether or not you think that there is a possibility then that these estimates or these numbers that have come out with the exit polls can be completely different uh, than the kind of results that they're pointing out surely uh, that would not be the case and what is your own estimate on the election results sir okay 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 i'll i'll take uh, both the questions together as far as taking a uh, you know having my view on the uh, exit polls if exit polls are gospel truth god sent truth then what happened in himachal election would have not happened what happened in tamil nadu would have never happened what has been happening in odisha will never happen there are what happened in punjab what happened in delhi would have not happened you see these are estimates they can yes by and large there have been cases where now we are finding most of the exit polls are trying to indicate something which is towards bjp this is their way of calculation but how do i believe on it i will only believe on it when the real result comes these are indicators you tell me who which which particular person is able to guarantee that yes it will be 355 442 44 401 no these are estimates based on their speculations based on their calculations based on their survey 
So I, I personally, as an army, what I, what I wanted, what I wanted to clarify is whether it could be a drastic change or not. But let us welcome Dr. John Dial in the debate as well and get his perspective too. Uh, Dr. John, of course, when when we talk about um, uh, the different political parties and how these elections went, we've had discussions previously throughout the past six weeks or so as well um, in terms of um, how the elections are proceeding. But now that we're this close uh, to the results being announced tomorrow, um, when you look back at these elections. What have they meant for you? Oh, let, let me first of all thank you very much for having me. The fact that I come on your channel and I'm able to express myself against the ruling party in India consistently without fear is to an extent a certificate to democracy in India. The fact that two of us are in this debate today from two very opposite perspectives on Indian polity and on the ruling party is itself in many ways a certificate to democracy in India. Democracy was never in doubt about India. The massive scale of the elections confirms it. The future threat to democracy was the issue. What would happen if the BJP could implement the dog whistle when they said that if they have an absolute majority by which they could amend the constitution. The dog whistle was that they would amend the constitution and possibly change reservation, change, etc. These issues did become part of the issues in the election raised by the Congress and the INDIA and others. They became issues. The dog whistles became issues. But my fear was and continues to be and that is something that's substantiated by the chief election commissioner today. He said that they had as policy decided not to censor the top two leaders of the BJP and the top two leaders of the Congress. The Congress, they said, the brother and sister team of Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi Wadra. And the BJP team was the prime minister, the Honorable Mr. Narendra Modi, and the Home Minister, the Honorable Mr. Amit Shah. But the problem was that when you refused to censor Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi, they were not abusing. They were not calling for the blood of X, Y, and Z. They were not saying, we must banish these people, these people are vermin, these people are so-and-so, these people are the cuckoo's nest. They were not abusing or, or, or cornering religious minorities. The dog whistles in the prime minister's speeches and in the home minister's speeches, one the more vulgar than the other, were absolutely obscene. And complaints were made to the election commission. And now they admit that the complaints were made, but we decided not to do any anything further on that. And that sets up a mood on how far it questions, let me put it politely, despite the tremendous work that the Election Commission has done, setting up a massive election. And in India, with a 1.40 billion population, everything here is massive. The number of blind are massive. The number of eye surgeries are massive. The number of cancers are massive. The number of cancer cures are massive. Everything is massive. So we'll remove the massiveness out of contention. But the problem was that despite its tremendous work of, as you said, five, five half a million people working to implement the election, the independence, the neutrality of the election commission remained in doubt, continues to remain in doubt, and will do so till four o'clock tomorrow when the election results will be out and we'll be given the results. And then we have no option as law-abiding citizens of an independent democratic country, but to respect them, obey them, work with the government that comes into power, challenge it, if we disagree with it, support it when we disagree with it. But we still continue to pray that our wishes come true, but it's an election that will decide the rule. Yes. Uh, right. With your permission, Sana, mm -hmm. I wanted to go towards uh, Colonel Shalendra. Colonel Shalendra, it's always so good to have you in our show and to see you sitting next to us uh, on the screen. It's always so good to see. Uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, uh, highlight a, f a fact which has been obviously echoing throughout the campaign uh, which was being run by uh, Congress and the Indy uh, Party, India uh, Alliance as they call it. <coughs> uh, 
uh, as they were saying that the uh, essence of uh, uh, you know uh, Indian Constitution, of course, it is uh, secularism, and the secularism was being challenged, uh, of course, by BJP in uh, last two tenures, and if they get the third tenure with the Abki Bar Charso Par, then it would have been uh, some sort of uh, you know as. Uh, we know that uh, Dr. John has just uh, mentioned earlier that there were uh, issues related to that, that the essence of uh, the constitution, it would go away because uh, there would be changes in the constitution. Of course, this time around, I'm not sure whether they will be in a position to, BJP will be in a position to change or amend the constitution to that level that it uh, loses its uh, secularism. But can we say that uh, you know the upcoming government uh, can be considered as a government that can uh, take up the uh, sort of uh, you know issues which are being faced by people at large in india seriously when it comes to of course uh, you know uh, joblessness it is peaking and then of course people have uh, medical related problems as well uh, people at large they are facing several other problems and then on top of course there is a sort of uh, element of uh, uh, you know uh, hatred that existed uh, in the recent speeches of bjp i mean modi himself and the other top tier leadership of bjp they have been uh, coming up with the slogans and the speeches that were not being uh, you know re uh, received uh, with the with the smile by uh, you know all of the uh, corners of uh, uh, India, especially talking about the minorities, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, all of them they had issues with it. Dalits they had issues with it as well. Can we say that this uh, after this election it is going to be changed or it would uh, you know further deepen the hatred which we are already seeing in there? Uh, Raja Saab, uh, very kind of you. We have always been very good, uh, you know, uh, evaluators of any situation. And I'll be very honestly, frankly, doing it with you right now. Uh, but before that, I'll take only 10 seconds to John Saab, who said that uh, anything to do with abusive, abusing the uh, minor community. Sir, I fully agree with you. Nobody has got a right to abuse any community. Why minor community? Any community for that matter. Humanity cannot be abused. If there is an abuse, it is against humanity. And that humanity is between you and me. As far as this tricky point about the amendment of the Constitution, I could not, maybe I'm wrong, right? I don't know. I could not read in any of the agendas of BJP that they have written anywhere that we would like to amend the Constitution. And that is why we want to go char so far. Yes, there is a fair assumption that the moment they are char so far, they have that kind of advantage to do that. But let me tell you, are not people that much intelligent that now if you are believing that the exit polls are right, they are only coming at 350, 360, 370. So people are intelligent enough, one. Number two, if people are wanting to be that aggressive as what BJP is, as I said, you will get a government the way you are. We needed a government in Indira Gandhi. She was even called as a dictator by some people. No problems. That is the way people wanted it at that time. There was a time when people wanted somebody like Nehru to be the prime minister because we had just got the freedom. What he did wrong or right is circumstantial to that particular time. Today, if Modi is to be seen as a hardliner, as a decision maker of aggression, then I think the people are responsible for that. Why are we going to blame anybody? As I said, you will get a government the way you want it. If you want an aggressive government, you will get it. Yes, the point regarding jobs. How will you get the jobs? Is it is it Modi who will give you the jobs? Is it only BJP who will give you the jobs? That means all those people who are non-BJP will not give you the jobs. That is not how the things work. The economy rises if the GDP is beating all the you know expectations and going to the 8.2 that means there is a hope now we have to work on it who will work on it government will definitely work on the policies of it but that doesn't amount to that they will start concentrating only on amendment of a uh, 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 constitution secularism ko hata kar ek minute ke liye main theoretically aap logo ke saath chalta hu if they will remove the secularism you think that india will change India will remain the way it is. 
allow me to say that nothing will happen to mr john and me nothing will happen there will be no changes yes we are worried about the country the, the there there if we are worried about the country then yes people will suitably answer it the way they have the ballot power with them mm -hmm. sir right. this this is a breaking news you given to me <laughs> in a, in okay, a way okay, okay. you are accepting that of course uh, we are heading towards a sort of uh, you know no secularism in, in in india when there is a third term of bjp theoretical sir i said your theoretical question yes that absolutely. if you are asking us. you did you did yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah, but we'll we'll, right. we'll build more on what you talked about uh, mr shilinder singh but let me come to you farooq before i go back yeah. to dr john uh, you've had uh, a viewpoint up for these elections yeah, that you yeah. stated very very yeah, 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 previously yeah, as did. well of course the exit polls suggest otherwise and yeah. of course you can agree with what mr shilinder singh was pointing towards we still have tomorrow to mm. find out what the actual results are but um, so far <laughs> what do you think is going to be the case um, and also add to that uh, what we were earlier of course discussing in terms of democracy, um, uh, whether or not it was under threat previously or can possibly be in the future in India, and then also in terms of the power uh, that this puts on the people then in terms of what they want and who they elect. Does whoever uh, comes into power, if we talk about Modi, then would that mean that this is what the people want? Of course, uh, Sana, first of all, thank you very much the nature of your question. So I will repeat what I actually repeated sure. uh, last time when there were elections, um, O ye of little faith. <laughs> 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 but uh, first of all, let us start with the one thing that is very clear. I think uh, Indian people and India deserve congratulations because yeah. this was such massive uh, exercise, it Sana. Was. Mm. Uh, 642 million people voted. That is three times the total population of Pakistan True. and that is twice the population of the United States. Mm. And as was pointed out by Colonel uh, Shalanda Singh and John Dal Saab, uh, that it was mostly peaceful. Right? Yeah. Uh, there, there were uh, a couple of uh, outlier uh, violence in Bengal and then there was uh, this uh, Sambal episode. But there was so much vigilance that mm. uh, if such a microcosm can actually be highlighted, such an outlier be uh, highlighted, that means it was essentially mostly peaceful. Mm. Uh, the second thing, unlike the past two elections, Sana, uh, there wasn't a big, uh, you know, lurking issue here. For example, there wasn't any Balakot, mm. there wasn't uh, any Mozaffar Nagar, or for that matter, um, uh, uh, you know, Anna Hazari's Andolan. So whatever BJP is going to gain, and I, uh, I kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, am going to agree with the, uh, you know, exit polls. Whatever we are hearing here, Sana, we are hearing reports from ground level, right? And people might be telling us one thing, but they might not have the scientific tools to judge what exactly the p opinion of the people is. Mm -hmm. And of course, it has happened in the past as well. Exit polls usually, not always, of course, there is the example or exception of 2004, when, uh, you know, um, an outlier won, UPA won instead of uh, that. But that is more like our 1992 World Cup. And that is more like 1977, uh, you know, agitation of our opposition. Whenever opposition goes out uh, agitating, they think that they will be able to replicate 77 and bring down the, uh, you know, uh, government. Or for that matter, whenever we enter World Cup, we think that we are going to play like 92 and win. Yeah. But such things don't actually replicate, right? Mm. 2004 is an excuse, essentially, because it was one time it backfired. Of course, Hamachal, Bengal, uh, uh, state elections have seen uh, you know, um, uh, exit polls backfiring. That doesn't mean that exit polls don't have any problem with them. They don't add up in many cases, but that doesn't mean that they're not indicating in the right direction. Mm. So whatever we heard was uh, circumstantial, and whatever exit polls are seeing, of course, the people of India and uh, are seeing something in Narendra Modi and his party that maybe many of people like me might not be able to, because you know, we are accustomed to the idea of India as per Congress's version, right? I grew up, I told you, reading the Mahatma Gandhi's books or Nehruji's books, and they were like part, essential part of my worldview of how world should be. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that the world cannot be another way, 
and the people and in this program I've repeatedly told you that there are many huge accomplishments for example 800 million people getting a ration per month mm -hmm. five kilo of ration is not a small accomplishment similarly I heard a beautiful comment from someone this idea of developing toilets in the rural areas it is not essentially a sanitation issue it is essentially a power, uh, you know, law and order issue because people get vulnerable when they have to go uh, and relieve themselves outside their homes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's many things that might have worked in their favor. We don't know what uh, tomorrow is going to entail. But the, um, your question about, uh, you know, what kind of government is going to be one. When you, you were talking about secularism, India is so big, right? Pakistan is big also in size. You know, um, to think that India is essentially fully secular is just like thinking that Pakistan is totally an Islamic Republic, mm. right? <laughs> These are broad generalizations, but hardly ever happens, right? Of course, its constitution is secular, but then there are other issues which are far bigger than secularism. Mm. For example, reservations for the common man, especially the lower caste. Mm. And I hope that whenever, uh, whatever happens to the constitution, um, essentially, it was also Baba Sahib, uh, uh, you know, Ambedkar who Ambedkar. was fighting the election. Um, and if he loses, who am I to say anything about it? It is India's choice. Mm -hmm. But I hope that the um, most vulnerable caste essentially are protected through some kind of reservation. That should happen in Pakistan also. That should happen all over the world. Vulnerable should be protected. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, remember that day when Amesha say, uh, said that we are not going to change constitution. And you asked me, do you trust that statement? I said, why wouldn't I? Because he is somebody in power. If he is saying that, I would. Hmm. So my, my humble submission is, why do I care about Indian uh, elections? Hmm. Uh, do I do it because I'm going to get something out of it? Or because I'm going to suddenly become powerful and advisor to the alternative bloc? No, I will do it because I care deeply about Indian people almost as much as I do care uh, deeply about Pakistani people, right? And I, I fell in love with the Indian beauty of the common man on the street. So will it be fair if I like them or love them, but I don't uh, appreciate or respect their choices even if they're different from mine? Mm. For example, I have kids, I have, I have siblings, and I want something for them, and they have a different choice. So should I think that they, because they are choosing differently, I should uh, start, uh, you know, m m not assessing them as my own blood, my own kith and kin? Right, I understand so that, that. But yeah. some choices can be self-destructive. I don't know, Sana. I'm not the one who writes future history. I'm just a student like you. Mm. So I, um, I just feel like going with the flow. I had a great time during the election, <laughs> especially it triggering my friends like Faisal. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I said something, he was but I, but I, but I he, was, he was triggered. Yeah. So I, I had a great time. Now it's over. We'll have to yeah. wait and see the results. And we will, at least I will appreciate and respect India's choice. Absolutely. Yeah, but, uh, uh, Dr. John Dale, you were raising your hand. You wanted to add something. Please go uh, ahead. Yes, of course. I, I was going to say that I'm sure the Colonel will join me in assuring Farooq Saab that we Indians love the Pakistani people and we love that great cricketer whose ad we saw. What, what, what tremendous speed he had. And he's, we are all proud of his talents. The point is not this, and the point is also not that in democracy, the majority vote decides. Of course it decides. But as everybody knows, whether it's in America, Pakistan, or India, when the majority wins, it is not the defeat of the minority. The assurance to the minority is that its interests are being taken care of. As a Christian with a 2.3% stake in the population, I know that um, it'll be very difficult for a Christian in 100 years to become prime minister. They may, but mostly probably they will not, and our representation in parliament will be low, etc. Et but we feel safe in that. Even if we don't have much representation in parliament, the Hindus there, the Muslims there, the Sikhs there, will take care of concerns. That is what democracy is about. And any signal, any dog whistle that makes me worry about that, then it makes me worry about it. I have no issue at all in, in committing myself and my descendants to 
living in a democratic India. I have, I have no desire and absolutely no, not even an iota to migrate, to flee, as, as two pro-Indians have done, a lot of them from Gujarat. That is not our point. The point is that, as you correctly said, Dalits, tribals, religious minorities need this assurance. They may not want it, but they continually want, it's like the child with the mother. We want to be reassured that our deepest fears are being addressed, that there's no demon under our bed, our concerns will be taken care of. 850 million people getting rations is a tremendous job for the government. 850 million people needing a government dole for food, which they would have loved to earn for themselves. Every man of head of the house wants to be able to have the energy and the job to provide for his wife and two or three or four or five children. So this cuts both ways. 850 million rations is a tremendous achievement. Otherwise, there would have been starvation. 850 people needing rations is something that we hope the government will address, whichever government it is. And together with it, we will address the fears of the people. That is the only thing, the fears of the people. The fears may be just a fear of the dark. There may be nothing in the dark, but the fear exists. Ask any child, ask me. And I want to ask you, actually, Dr. John Dial, that do you think that if, if we have the election results um, uh, for a certain political party or the other, would you feel any difference in how safe you feel? Would you feel safer with one no. political party or the other? I am not the average Indian. I'm an entitled Indian. My enemies will protect me. I tell you that. But will the common Muslim boy in the village feel safe? Will somebody transporting cattle to, for milk be worried? Will a Sikh be worried that he'll be called a Khalistani and done away with or whatever? Would people be worried that they'll be in jail for years and years and years and the case will never come? Because that is the way many things come. But these are structural flaws which need to be addressed and, and which I'm sure, and, and Farooq Sahib and Raja Sahib, are as aware of it as you are indeed. Anchors get to do a lot, talking to so many experts, like getting a PhD every week. So that, that is our thing. We have faith in Indian democracy. Therefore, we stay here. Therefore, we criticize it on a Pakistani TV channel. Can, can you understand the weight of that? Many Americans would not want to uh, criticize even in a, on an American channel. I can assure you of that. The fact we have faith in Indian democracy and we have faith that our friends will protect us. Stan Swami was in jail. Prabir Prakash, my friend, was in jail. We were screaming outside the jail every day. We know, we know that if I'm jailed, somebody else will. The colonel will scream for me. So those are things. But if you tell me that we're in a perfect world, I'm so sorry. We would want the world to be perfect. We're still a little distance from it. Uh, colonel Chalendra, it's, it's a huge question, which is uh, not coming from me, but of course uh, coming from uh, Dr. Skies. John Dayal. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I think he has raised uh, the points, the points of concern, and them concerns are related to, of course, human rights. Human rights violations, they have increased in recent past, and that too related to minorities being, uh, you know, uh, of course, hurled at. Uh, the uh, the violence and the kind of uh, you know slurs we've been uh, uh, you know hearing to even in the political sermons as well against them uh, against Muslims Sikhs Christians all of them and even if we take the examples from northeast I mean uh, government aligns itself with the Methi tribe to of course uh, beat up the Kuki tribe Kuki tribe majority Christians that's why they uh, sort of uh, you know uh, get that kind of violence to face. And uh, we know that that has been happening in past. And we have had you in our show related to that as well. Can we see in coming future that all of these problems can be, you know, uh, sort of uh, uh, meeting it their end? Because I know, uh, I mean, we have been uh, obviously in touch since almost six to seven years. And I have always found you someone who always believes in talks and believes in, uh, you know, peaceful uh, uh, sort of uh, solution to all of the problems faced by any, uh, even if it is bilateral between Pakistan and India, or even if it's, uh, uh, you know, bilateral uh, within India, 
in between the two different faiths and uh, I know you're, you are a voice that matters a lot and of course you're a voice of peace. What would you say about this, sir? Thank you very much. I can only tell you, John Dayal, sir, with your permission, we don't love the cricketer, we love the country. We love them totally. They are our people. They are humans. That is why we love them. It is not because they play cricket or they play anything else. We do hate them when it comes down to war, when it comes down to terrorism, when it comes down to anything. That is the same case happening in my own country. If I am not a, into you know blind bhakti towards anybody, if there is a challenge, I do accept it. There is a challenge in our country that there has been violence. There is no denying. But tell me one day when it didn't happen in last 70 years. You give me any one day when it didn't happen. So there is nothing called as BJP government or Modi government or Indira Gandhi government. You, you can please go through the statistics and you will come to know. I don't want to commit it here because then, uh, you know, we'll get into uh, something else. But what I'm trying to bring out to you is, take my word, no government, whichever may come, no government will have dare any chances that they can take that they will leave this direction of progress where we are into economic progress, worldly progress, neighborly progress. They cannot afford to leave it. We always thought Biden is against us. Trump is in favor. You see Biden is with us. Because when the country starts going with you, then there is nothing else happening. There is a challenge on uh, you know violence. I do agree. But then that is the way our countries are. Even Pakistan will have those challenges. Now, I can't start blaming that there's nothing like that happening. There is no organized killing, what I'm trying to say. Maithi's issue, I have been part of Assam Rifle. I am telling you, never, ever, never, ever we got instructions that you have to side anybody. In my own company, there were equal number of Maithi's and equal number of cookies. They are existing even till today. If you want, next time, I can come out with a statistic exactly that what is the percentage of cookies and meth is in my Assam rifle. There's no problem. Just imagine. But what is the problem? The problem is something else. That yes, for whatever political reason, that the state government did not foresee it, took those steps to avoid it. You cannot say from Delhi. No, it doesn't happen like that. If everything starts happening, then there, then where is the difference between an anarchy country and us? We have a democracy. Why? Why Methis are able to, or Pukis are able to, or Methis are able to speak about each other? This is democracy. This is freedom. If, if Raja Faisal can ask us this question, what a freedom we are giving to anybody and everybody that, okay, I dare answer him that, yes, there is violence. Where is the doubt? We are not denying, we are not in a denial mode. I'm, I'm very responsibly saying this, whichever is this government coming, will have the same problem and same challenge as far as violence is concerned. Take my word, sir, beyond the aisle, sir, you might have experienced it in a micro way, but there is no organized killing of any minority because of the diktat of the central government. I don't think like that. Never ever I got an instruction like that. Why? Because at least I believe, even if that instruction will come someday in future, I will not obey with it. I will not go by it. Good That's why I said right. rigging yes. the election. Absolutely. We're almost out of time. I think Dr. John wants to add something. Yes, Dr. John. No, no. It's extremely good to hear that. And I think there are many officers, honestly. Five, five million workers working on election will never, will never allow that election can get rigged. One odd place can happen. I, I can't deny that. One odd place of violence, I can't deny it. But overall, the elections have been fair. And yes, you will see a deserving government will come. The what and what is the nature of that government is the nature of the people who are electing. Why blame that government? Why blame that party? It is the people who are going to do it. <laughs> if we are looking at aggression nowadays, then just move yeah, yeah, yeah. And Let me just close with saying that. It is the majority which makes the government. Yes. And it is the government that protects the minority. The fact that we have elections every five years is a celebration of the democracy. I am not saying that the will of the majority will not be reflected in the government. And if the BGP does not come to power, that will also be the will of the majority. It will not be my vote 
which have but made a difference. So we, we are quite celebrating democracy and we're hoping and praying and, and willing the new government to ensure that it is our collective government. It will take care as much as of me as it will do of any majority community. I thank you for getting both of us on this debate on this very crucial night. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much for joining us thank tonight. You. Thank you, Dr. John Dial, and thank you, Mr. Shalinder Singh, for being part of the discussion. And best of luck to whoever wins uh, tomorrow and, of course, uh, whoever is going to be forming uh, the government in Farooq will come back to you <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow as well yeah. with the same <laughs> thing. Yeah. thing has to stop somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. We're now going to move on to our next segment very quickly with regards to what's happening in the country as well uh, with the kind of political statements that we've been seeing coming in from PTI, again, targeted and aimed at the Chief Justice of Pakistan claiming that the decisions are not there in favor because of his presence in the benches. Um, Faisal, of course, we've seen this and we've seen the Pakistan Bar Council also react to this statement and talking about the credibility of the Chief Justice of Pakistan. Uh, why is it that this is something that um, has to be um, taken cognizance of to this extent? Uh, when we talk about uh, the, uh, the PTI, for example, this has been part of their rhetoric or narrative for so long. Uh, whoever is on the benches, whoever the Chief Justice of Pakistan is, it seems that there always is a problem if things are not in their favor. Yes, and it's uh, highly unfortunate that we are living in a country where, uh, you know, whoever is sitting on the opposition benches, they are always hurling uh, these kind of statements against, uh, you know, uh, against the Supreme Court and especially against the Chief Justice of Pakistan. I mean, Chief Justice of Pakistan should never be uh, sort of uh, subjected to these kind of uh, slurs. Whoever's government it is and whoever is sitting in the opposition, they should never ever go to this length to, of course, uh, you know, malign a Chief Justice of Pakistan. He's sitting Chief Justice, whatever the decisions he's come in uh, with and in past whatever the decisions he has made, of course, them decisions, they had relevant uh, reasons behind them and relevant uh, uh, constitutional reasons behind them. And that is why he actually came up with this, these decisions. I mean, uh, they can be people who are unhappy with them decisions, but as long as them decisions are being, uh, you know, uh, delivered with the, with the essence of uh, constitution itself, they should not they should never be of course uh, you know uh, a reason hmm. to uh, sort of uh, hurl criticism on uh, the sitting chief justice of pakistan to right. me i think this fashion from coming from the opposition benches this must end now hmm. there is an element of respect first of all i always say that that, that the constitution avenue must be respected and the parliament house right, must absolutely. be respected but the utmost respect must be shown to uh, of course, uh, you know, Supreme Court of Pakistan absolutely. and Chief Justice of Pakistan. Uh, absolutely. Well. And, and Farooq, uh, we understand, of course, that there's no r real uh, um, way in which uh, this can cause any problems because the Chief Justice has a full legal right to be part of those benches. And there are yeah. many, including, of course, the Pakistan Bar Council and others who speak very highly of his competence and credibility. <coughs> um, and so it seems that um, talking about this or even raising this stance um, the odds don't seem to be in, in the PTI's favor. So then what, what really is uh, the hoped for objective? Uh, right, uh, Sana, thank you very much for this question. I think that uh, unlike Faisal, I don't believe in any card blanche to anyone, right? Mm. Uh, my humble submission is that everybody who is sitting on, uh, on a post actually essentially earns their right to be respected. Mm. Uh, demanding respect is never uh, something that authoritarian leaders might be able to do but in democracies essentially constitutional democracy that is not how things happen now regarding uh, the chief justice of pakistan my actual concern is that not only has he earned his respect because he has been a victim and he has been a victim of whom Sana? he has been a victim of the time when pti was in government right and they particularly, their president, their own law minister, they actually went out of the way to hurt him. And we kept on seeing his suffering. Now the question is, shouldn't I be asking PTI, when are you going to stop, uh, you know, um, yeah. victimizing the man? Uh, uh, secondly, uh, I've gone through all the verdicts that he has actually given. One thing that I really applauded was that he started live streaming. Of course, there are going to be exceptions. 
but that is a revolution in itself. The second thing is, I think that the recusal in the end depends on the judge himself. Right. If they don't recuse, you can't actually unseat mm. them. Uh, the, uh, the saddest part is that he is going to retire very soon, right, mm. within months. And those people, and this actually reminds me of something Dumbledore said about Voldemort, right. that all auto autocrats actually fear their victims. Because when they rise, they can actually become something of a big challenge. Absolutely. But I'm, I haven't seen the Chief Justice actually being vindictive. He hasn't. Right. right? So it is sad, and I think that PTI is actually now not helping itself. Hmm. It is not realizing that it is already in a ditch. Right. Would you stop digging? Hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, Thank, I you think one Thank you, Farouk. One liner. Yes. I We're think out the, of time, actually. Yeah. The, the fear is within, uh, of course, PTI, mm. because PTI knows that in past, uh, the Chief Justice of Pakistan, the current Chief Justice, he had uh, sort of, uh, you know, a tough time in terms of the cases right. which were yes. held by Point them. Point taken. Thank so you, Fester. And thank you, Farouk, for joining us. That's all that we have from the debate. We'll now see you tomorrow.